Hello and happy Sunday. So tonight I think I want to show you uh, some mystery comic book packs that I found at Ollie's and and I'll tell you why I picked them. Um, first off, I'm a huge fan of these old Star Trek comics and I, whenever I see them I like to collect them, fill in the gaps in my collection. Um, just love these old Star Treks. Um, this is from when I was a kid, so, and this one is, um, looks like it's the Cage episode with Captain Pike. If you were a fan of the original Star Trek, you might remember the unaired pilot was called the Cage, and then they retold it for an episode called the Menagerie, but, um, the original pilot, uh, and it looks like this is, uh, a comic of that, and this one is... Cyberspace 3000, but I also saw that on the spine, there's a big trade paperback for the Victorian. And if you watch my videos, you know that I'm a Victorian fan. And I try to find all the Victorians I can. I just think that's a really fascinating comic. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start. Um, I want to start with this one. See if this is like the cage. Um... them out right here and let's start with Star Trek early voyages from May of 1997 uh, this was well, about a year after I joined the Air Force so I wasn't really a kid when this came out but it's still kind of an old style comic it's got the old Paramount logo on it Marvel presents Paramount comics on the back, you got an ad for Hershey's Cookies and Cream, which was still a new candy bar. And so you've got an ad for Oreo, Cheese Nips, Chips Ahoy right here. And then we get to the comic on the old newsprint. And this is very much like um, the show. I don't know if you watch Strange New Worlds, but they've redone these characters and changed them. But there's number one and the Yeoman, Spock, um... The original characters that we saw from the original episode, which is really great for me. Um, before James T. Kirk, before Jean-Luc Picard, there was Christopher Pike. These were the voyages of the Starship Enterprise, its five-year mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Now, this is a comic I would like to complete uh, because I love the comics that tell a story. Like, I have all of the Star Trek comics for the city on the edge of forever. It's one of my favorite uh, sets. Here's Mutown cheese and crispy snacks. I don't know if these exist anymore, but there's a coupon, buy one, get one free. But why would anyone cut this out of their comic book? Man, why would you do that? Uh, ad for old PlayStation 1 Rally Cross game. Um, Dr. Boyce, he was um, Dr. Pike's, the original Bones, I guess you could say. You know, a doctor, but also kind of like an advice giver. But of course, no one is as cool as Dr. McCoy. Then ad for m and Minis, which you can still find which are fun to eat, they're tiny and crunchy, and they're really good. And I do enjoy getting myself a tube of those occasionally. So it looks like this is a little bit different than the story we saw. And we got some different aliens that weren't in the original episode. They're in their dress uniforms. There's an ad for Goosebumps. CD-ROM game. Oh, this is really... This looks like a comic book series I would like to complete. Definitely. I would like to read this cover to cover. 
Witchblade. Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Star Trek Voyager, Starfleet Academy. Yeah, this is definitely one that I'd like to complete. And we get some concept drawings. Dr. Boyce, Mr. Spock, Captain Pike, number one. Um, uh, Yeoman Colt, she was in the show for sure. Um, I want to say maybe Lieutenant Cole was too. There was like a, a gee whiz kind of character, you know, the, the rookie guy. And so this is a good find, uh, in my opinion. This is the kind of stuff I love to Captain Crunchberries. Yeah, this is the kind of comic that I'm always excited to get my hands on. One like this that um, I want to finish. And look at this. Uh, old Fantastic Four from the old days um, when they looked like them. The original shows. And you also got Thor and Iron Man from the old days before all the Marvel. And gosh, who's that? Looks like Indiana Jones. Um... You got an ad for Sky Shark video game for Nintendo. Old classic comic on the old newsprint. That's the way a comic should be. And you got your original Fantastic Four with his gray sideburns for Mr. Fantastic. And the original Nick Fury kind of looks like that too, so I used to get them confused with each other. Very cool. Very cool to find classic comics like this. Iron Man, you know, and I've said this before, but Iron Man was not like a big deal before the movie. I mean, he was a lesser comic character. The biggest characters were the Hulk and Spider-Man, then Captain America. But Marvel as a whole had really, really chilled behind DC. The most popular comic book characters before, the, before Iron Man came out was Batman, followed by a long distance by Superman, then Spider-Man, and the Hulk. Those were, I mean, those were really the only characters that mattered. And Iron Man and Thor and all of them were much, they were secondary. That was a TSR role-playing game. The Web of Gold game, kind of like an action-adventure game. And we get an ad for Double Old Dragon. So far, so good on this comic haul. Now we've got Valiant Comics, Dr. Mirage, kind of a Dr. Strange ripoff with the ad on the back for Super Nintendo. So this is still an old comic, which is always kind of exciting to get your hands on the old ones. A Wolverine game. This is on that more uh, plasticky paper. It's not the newsprint. It's more like the, the tabloid magazine paper. But it's still an old comic. It's got the the usual fan service that um, you don't see as much now. Uh, well, at, the, at least in the period we're in right now. I'm sure that'll change. But, um, and also like the other, the non-Marvel, non-DCs would do a lot more fan service to try to sell their comics, I think. And a lot more gore, too. But this, all things considered, looks like a fairly solid comic. Let's 
some some kind of John Carpenter effects going on here. Nineteen ninety four, the year of visitor. So far, so good with this haul. Next, we have a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, fairly recent from Boom Studios. Um, yeah, this is th now we're getting to recent territory, and we you see the change of the paper quality here and the decline in the artwork. Uh, I'm not a huge Power Rangers fan. Uh, they it kind of they kind of came out when I was in high school, so I was a little too old to get into them as a kid. And you get some covers in the back. Add for Joyride, a little snippet, I guess, from the Joyride comic. And add for Pink Power Ranger, who I remember being very popular. Uh, probably the actress was considered pretty, I think. I can't remember what the deal was. And we end this pack with... Marvel Knights X-Men number three of five with a bonus digital. Uh, we've got Black Widow on the back uh, for a Dr. Pepper ad. Haunted three of five. And we got this yellow spandex Wolverine. Interesting artwork. Got uh, superhero masters, uh, something that probably didn't sell very well. Um, artwork in this is interesting, but I'm not a fan. This is not my style. Um, very sketchy. Let's see. Um, oh gosh, can't remember his name. He was in. Oh, he was in um, the last uh, Deadpool movie. Um, and I keep him. I always get him confused with Colossus. But it's like. But yeah, it'll come to me. Fairly popular character. Makes a great action figure. Juggernaut. Yeah, I think. Okay. Uh... And there's that. So that wraps up the first pack. The best one by far is this Early Voyages. I'll leave that on top. Followed by... This Fantastic Four and this one, I think, are the three top ones in this pack right here. Next, let's go ahead and look at the other Star Trek. Okay, and we'll start with this guy. This is was a 75 cent comic so this might have been then we got an ad for whole oh, in television yeah advanced dungeons and dragons in television yeah this has got to be old this is oh look uh this is from the 80s 
because these 1984 yeah uh, I have that Superman that Lex Luthor I had the Batman and I had Martian Manhunter from this collection these are actually a very fine collection of action figures put out by Kenner these uh, DC heroes this was a fantastic collection if you could have gotten it and I think they are kind of remaking them but they're not exact to how they were um, so this is 1984. This is in between Star Trek 3 and 4. We got the new Enterprise. It's new to me, at least. Um, and you see Savick, Dr. McCoy in his 1980s uniform. The red uniforms that we saw in the movies. You get a free Batman comic book. When you mail in three proofs of purchase from Oreo. Collector's Edition, first issue. That's probably worth a lot, even if it's a reprint. That's probably worth a lot nowadays. The old Oreo package. I love these old Star Trek comics. And they, they were so imaginative because they could go to the worlds that they couldn't make in the movies or the shows that just wouldn't have had the budget for. That's one thing I liked about the cartoon. It looks like the Reliant and a Klingon ship. And I don't see Spock in this because I think this is when, after, maybe this is before the search for Spock came out and they were kind of flying without Spock. And the Savick look, still looks like Kirstie Alley, so this might be before the search for Spock. Bill Cosby says, if you can't send you, send money. American Red Cross. Here's some uh, cross swords with champions. Enter the lost world of the warlord. Rimco toys. What if I had any of these? I won't, I might have Kmart action figures. <laughs> I'm drinking some coffee. Oops. I love these old comics. Blue Devil. And a little bit um, letters about Star Trek. And some Atari games. This was the 80s. Very cool. Very cool find here. Next, we've got a, another, interestingly, a Fantastic Four. And it's funny, the last one was followed by a, a Fantastic Four. But this is a much newer one. Annihilation Scourge. This is a much newer Fantastic Four. We got an ad on the back for Joy Wave Obsession. Um, no idea what this is. This would be a, a CD or something. Yeah. They made it look like a movie ad. Ad for Axe. They tried to tie into comic books here. Um... So, yeah, this is a much different Fantastic Four. But the artwork's pretty good. Hey, he's got a beard kind of like um, in the new Doctor Strange movie when we see, when we meet Mr. Fantastic and he's played by John Krasinski with a beard, which I thought looked great. Um, and if, if they do make a Fantastic Four movie and if they don't have John Krasinski, I'm not watching it. I saw him as Mr. Fantastic, and I thought, you can't get any better than that. Silver Surfer.
Yeah, the artwork in this is pretty decent, actually. Whoa. Creep little body horror there. So you got any plans for Memorial Day? The beach looks good, but it looks like there's going to be a storm coming in, which really sucks if you had a plan to go to the beach, um, at least in the Gulf, um, the Gulf of Mexico, we might get thrashed by a storm, and I sure hope that's not the case. Um, here is Shadow by Va Valiant Comics. This is an, uh, not old, but older, because we've got some Terminator 2 and Alien 3 games, so this is older, I would say, in the 90s. In fact, um, 1993. Yeah, so this is older. Kind of reminds me of The Crow, that kind of era of pop culture. What do we have here? And this is your lucky serial number from Valiance. Do not detach this coupon from your comic I won't keep it here forever Interesting. Uh, next, we got a Power Rangers, and um, as you can see, it's the exact same one. So we're gonna go ahead and skip this one, and we have a another Fantastic Four, um, and so. As you can see, we have, this will be fantastic for three different ones, different eras, and we're going to review this one now. Interesting stuff. Um, this is relatively new. So, but they're kind of going back to the, the old appearance. There's an ad for the Navy. Um... Very, very good artwork. Yeah, the artwork is uh, top notch in this. Just amazing. This is a, a tribute to Michael Turner. Deadpool.
Venom Dark Origin. Ooh, little fold out poster here. Very nice. Very nice artwork. Sucky thing is it. Can you pull it out if you wanted to put it on your wall? I think it. No, it's two pages. That's what sucks is it's not connected. The Dark Knight is calling. Verizon Wireless. Oh, that's not a bad one. So we're down to our last pack. So. Um, let's see here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this Riverdale out of the way. I'm not a big Archie's fan, at least not recent Archie's, but it is sometimes interesting like that. If you recall last time um, I looked at this Archie 1941 and I thought that was pretty interesting, but as far as Riverdale, I'm not like a big fan, but I do love how the texture of this cover, this matte texture, I really like that. But it's just nothing like the original Archie that I grew up with, which was very light, comic, uh, harmless comic. Um, it wasn't trying to tackle any drama or social issues or anything. And the artwork in this is not so good. It's kind of sparse. It's... Um, You get the idea a lot of times that there's a difference between, there's a difference between, like you go on Netflix or whatever, there's a difference between a good show and content. Josie and the Pussycats. And, the, you know, and there's a difference between a good comic book and content, where they're just trying to churn out content every month to keep the shelves full, to keep the comic book store owners buying stuff. See, and sometimes stuff like this is content. It's, this is Action Lab, Dog of Wonder. Action Lab is not normally known for high quality comics. Sometimes they're cute, but they're, you know, I don't, you don't know of a lot of Action Lab fans. And the artwork, it's pretty lame. Um, so you get something like this and, you know. It's just not so good. And I like, I do appreciate the, uh, the animal... Uh, the the compassionate animals and I saw all that, but the comic itself though is not all that good. And then this is uh, also by Action Lab, and this is miraculous. And uh, I've seen quite a few of these in these videos, and I'm not a huge fan of this Lake a Ladybug character. The artwork is it, it's a it's that modern kind of Cartoon Network style of, um, in my opinion, not very good artwork kind of like powder puff girls or something just, just never been a fan of this style in fact i think i've come across this very one um yeah and we've got um cyberspace 3000 um there is some Features on the cover, try to get the light on it. You can see that there's um, some invisible features, which is neat.
You see? Try to show you all the features. That is cool in itself. It makes the comic a little special. Uh, it's an older comic. 1993. But this is... You know, stuff like that made it, you know, kind of neat. It's um, the older style, the older type of paper. So, I have to admit, I like ones like this. So I'm always happy to find one like this. And finally, the one I'm excited about. Oh my gosh, it's even in plastic. It's a Victorian trade paperback. It features Spectrum by Rick Berry and Michael Kaluta, award-winning arts. Um, this was a $20 value. So I have quite a few Victorian comics. So let's go ahead and carefully open this up. Oh boy, look at that. First of all, let's take a moment to appreciate this cover. Um, it's, is it, I, I don't know what the word is, embossed or whatever, but it, it's uh, pressed, the, the paper's pressed so you can feel the texture and it's glossy, but also it's got non-glossy for this part. It's just really beautiful. This is really starting off as, as a very beautifully done trade paperback. Um, this copy of the Victorian self immolation it's got a nameplate, so you can actually inscribe it. Um, the end papers are beautifully done with the steampunk style that we come to expect from the Victorian. Oh boy. Table of contents. I mean, this is just gorgeous. And what a beautiful, what a wonderful find to get this in a comic pack. Wow, a whole story you can read and finish. With the kind of artwork and imagination that I've come to expect them from the Victorian. So cool. You have chapter breaks for where the comics were. Very, very happy to have this in my hands. Yeah, a sip of coffee here.
I hear Trixie wants to come in, but she loves to crash my videos. I mean, this would take you a while to read. This is a whole doggone book that would look good in your bookcase. Think about all the comics you're getting for the for this one comic pack. All the comics I got that were all bound into this. So awesome. And we get a lot of artwork in the back. Quite a lot of artwork. And we get some text to read. A little card collection. Very, very cool. In pictures. Wow. I really am happy for this uh, set of mystery packs. And I really hope you enjoyed the video. So I uh, hope you like my channel. Please subscribe if you do. Um, give me a thumbs up. And um, click the bell icon if you subscribe. And leave a comment. I get around to answering them. I'm a little slow. I took a bit of a vacation. Uh, so I'm back now and I hope you are happy to have another video to watch tonight and, uh, until next time, bye.